This video is all about plants and how to keep them fit and healthy by giving them the right nutrients. As you know, plants, well, most plants, have got roots. When a plant is growing, it uses its roots to stay firmly in the ground by keeping itself anchored in place, but also they have roots to absorb water. The water is used in photosynthesis for making glucose using carbon dioxide and energy from the sun. And the water is also an important liquid because it acts as a solvent, transporting the chemical up and down the stems to the leaves and then to the roots and the roots to the flowers and the growing shoots at the tip of the plant. There are also some important elements that are dissolved in the water that the plants need to stay alive and the plant will use them to grow big and strong. These special elements are called nutrients and in plant nutrition it is important that there is no deficiency in the elements so that the plant gets strong and grows very well. Deficiency just means not enough of something. And in this case, we're talking about deficiency of the elements that allow it to grow properly. Each of the nutrients has a distinct function and it's necessary for nourishing the plant. Any shortage in them leads to something called a nutrient deficiency or just simply a deficiency in the plant. With different adverse effects on the plant, but they all make the plant sick in different ways. Just like if you didn't give an animal or a person good nutrients, they would get sick and not grow properly. If it doesn't get enough of the right nutrients through its roots, then it will not be able to grow properly. There are four that you need to learn about, and these are the nutrients essential for plant growth and a good overall state of the plant. The important nutrients are nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and magnesium. The first one is called nitrogen. Nitrogen is essential for plant development since it plays a fundamental role in releasing energy and making protein, which in biology has a very fancy name called protein synthesis, but it really just means making protein. Nitrogen is absorbed by the plant in the form of a chemical compound called nitrate. This nutrient is directly related to plant growth. And so it's also vital for photosynthesis and making chlorophyll. Because nitrogen is involved in every part of the plant that a person sees, nitrogen deficiency results in a loss of vigour and colour. Growth becomes slow and the leaves fall off, starting at the bottom of the plant. The next one that you have to know is called phosphorus. Phosphorus is involved in root growth, which it stimulates underground, and above the ground it helps with flowering. Although phosphorus is also necessary during the grass plant's growth period, it is much more involved in the flowering stage as well. Phosphorus is involved in transporting and storing energy. It improves the plant's general state and increases the plant's ability to withstand adverse climate conditions, making the plant tough and strong, or when we're talking about plants, we call that hardy. A shortage of phosphorus results in a lack of flowering or reduced flowering, or the flowering might be late. The leaves go brown and wrinkled and sometimes they go purple and there's a lack of vigour because they can't release the energy properly. The element after that is potassium. Potassium is involved in the regulator of, regulation of water and the transport of the plant's reserve substances. It increases photosynthesis capacity, strengthening cell tissue and activates the absorption of nitrates. Potassium stimulates flowering and the making of carbohydrates and enzymes, which in turn 
provides an increase in the plant's ability to withstand unfavourable environments such as low temperatures and also prevents withering which means curling up. So a lack of potassium reduces the resilience of a plant during the dry spells or frosts or for fungus attack which in turn results in a lack of balance among the other nutrients such as calcium, magnesium and nitrogen. When there is a potassium insufficiency dark spots appear on the leaves. Finally, magnesium. Magnesium is put into the core of every chlorophyll molecule and therefore is essential for photosynthesis. This makes it a vital element for plant development. Magnesium promotes the absorption and transportation of phosphorus. It contributes to the storage of sugar in the plant and magnesium performs the function of an enzyme activator and in fact it activates more enzyme than any other nutrient. Magnesium deficiencies result in weak stalks, loss of greenness in the older leaves and the appearance of yellow or brown spots, even though the leaves veins remain green. You can see in that picture on the left. Now if you're a farmer and you remove the plants and the crops to sell. The plants that are removed take their nutrients with them. That makes them nutritious for us to eat, but it leaves the soil deficient in those minerals. Farmers and gardeners use fertilizer to replace the lost minerals so that next plants, next year, have enough nutrients in the soil to grow properly. Fertilizers can be man-made or natural. Compost is a great natural fertilizer, as is animal manure, usually taken from herbivores like cows and horses. Man-made fertilizers are talked about in your GCSE chemistry course, and they replace minerals in exactly the same way. There are advantages and disadvantages to using both types. So, the question is, have you memorized it all? If you haven't, go back and watch it again. Perhaps you might want to make some notes, but it's always a good idea to wait a while and come back to the video once you've had time to think about it. Plant minerals are so important, and who knew that you had to give plants as many nutrients as you do with people?